Hi, this is Sahana. In this video, we are going to learn how to edit and delete data from database. In our last video, we have designed this view. We have learned how to fetch and display data from database. Today, we are going to learn how to edit and delete these records. Let's open index view, expand views folder. Inside employee folder, we have index.cshtml. We are going to start by modifying this view. First, we are going to add edit and delete buttons. After is active, I will add edit and delete buttons. See, now we have edit and delete buttons for each of the records. I have opened employee controller. We are going to add new action method, edit. I have added these two edit action methods, one for get and one for HTTP post request. This edit action method will receive ID as parameter. We have edit action method. Now I'm going to add edit view. Inside views folder, we have employee folder. Right click on employee folder, add, click on view, choose razor view empty, click on add, name it as edit. Now click on add. Now I will design this view. I will remove this and I will add this code. Edit view is almost same as add view. You can download the source code from my GitHub repo. You will get the link in the description. Let's quickly understand what we have here. We are binding this view to employee view model. Here we are assigning the title. Next. Here we have a form. Employee controller is going to handle this form and inside employee controller, edit action method is responsible to handle this form and method is post. This view is designed in such a way that when user clicks on edit button, he will get a form filled with all the existing details. Here we have input element with hidden attribute. See, hidden fields are used in model binding. By including a hidden field for employee ID with appropriate value, we ensure that the employee ID property is included in the form data when the form is submitted. And also hidden fields can retain the value between multiple requests. But please note, hidden fields are not a secure way to store sensitive data. They can be used to store non-sensitive data that you want to include in a form submission without displaying it to the user. As we have used hidden attribute, this employee ID will not be displayed to the user, but it will be there in a form submission. Rest of the fields are same as add form. In our upcoming session, we are going to reduce this redundancy by creating partial views. But for this session, we are going to keep it as it is. Now let's test the changes. I will click on list all employee. If I click on edit button, we are not getting that edit view. The reason is this is index view. At the bottom, we have edit button. Now we have to fix the issue. We'll bind this to ASP controller. ASP controller is employee. And I'll specify the action method. Action method is edit. In this case, we are going to edit the employee record. So we have to pass employee ID. How are we going to pass employee ID? We are going to make use of ASP root ID and we are going to specify employee ID. This is how we can pass employee ID to the action method. Now, if I click on edit, we are getting the edit form. But you look at this drop down list. This is empty. We have to fix this. Now I'll fetch department details from database and we can create select list out of it. Now in this line, we are fetching all departments from database and we are creating select list and assigning this to view back. We are getting error because we are calling asynchronous method and now we have to change it to async task. See, now this drop down list has data. We are not at done. If you look at this form, the fields are empty. As this is an edit form, we want to Fill, we want to populate the fields with existing values so that user can edit and submit the data. Next, we are going to fetch the employee details. Here we have repositories folder. We have I employee repository. We are going to call this get by ID async method, but I would like to change the method signature. I don't want to return employee. I would like to follow the same pattern for all the methods. I want to return employee view model. I will open the implementation class employee repository. Here we have get by ID async method. I will change the return type. Instead of returning the data, I will store that inside the variable. Next, I will create employee view model and map the details. And I will return this 
employee view model. That's it. Let's go back to employee controller and call this method. Now we are going to fetch employee details and we are going to return this data to the view. Okay, let's test it again. Okay, now I will click on edit employee. See, we are able to fetch the data and display it to the user so that user can edit the details. We are done with HTTP GET request. Now we should work on HTTP POST request. When we edit the details and click on SUBMIT, that creates HTTP POST request. Now we should handle that request. This edit method is going to receive parameter of type employee view model. Next, we are going to check the model state. If model state is not valid, then we are going to display error message. If it is valid, then we are going to call update method. Since we are calling asynchronous method, we are going to change method signature. We'll change it to async task. Let's test it now. I'll click on edit. I'll change the name. And I'll click on submit. See, we have changed the details. We have implemented edit functionality. Next, we are going to implement delete functionality. I have added this delete action method to this employee controller. This method takes parameter ID. Next, we are going to call delete method and we are passing employee ID. After deleting, we are redirecting this to index action method. There is a detailed video on how to implement repository pattern. You will find that video in the playlist. If you are interested, you can watch that video. Now we are going to modify this button. We are going to see we have specified ASP action, ASP controller and ASP route ID. I would like to add an extra thing. When I click on this delete button, I would like to get confirmation. I am using simple JavaScript. There are various ways, advanced ways to achieve this. For now, I would like to keep it simple. Let's test this application now. I will click on list all employees. Now I will click on delete. See, here we have a pop-up. Are you sure you want to delete this employee? If I click on OK, this record will be deleted. If I click on Cancel, it will be cancelled. I will click on Cancel. See, nothing happened. Again, I will click on Delete and I will see OK. See, the record is deleted. I have updated department module with same changes. The changes are same as we, we have to follow the same steps as we did for employee module. You can do it yourself or else if you want to refer to the source code, you will get source code from my GitHub repository. You will get a link in the description. You can edit the record. Click on submit. Record will be updated. If you want to delete, click on delete. You will be asked for the confirmation. If you cancel, it will be cancelled. If you see OK, record will be deleted. With this, we have implemented the basic functionalities like adding, updating, deleting. In next session, we are going to learn how to search for the records. That's it for today's session. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.